welcome to the week in the life of an English major. I'm about to head out to class. Today is my first class of the week. It's Monday and my first class is Renaissance Literature where we will be starting this beastly boy, the Fairy Queen. Have I done my readings? I'm not gonna lie, I have not. I did have time because I was working on an assignment and then I was working on another essay and sometimes you just don't have time to read. I'm gonna try to get there a little bit early, read the section before class. Today we're just talking about book one and I need to go, so let's go. All right, so the first hour is done. I'm on break. I literally just wrote a test last week for this class, but we already went over one for next week. It's a very nice October day, and I'm gonna go sit on a pile of logs. <laughs> there it is. I'm gonna sit right here. Crying a little bit. All right, I just got in from class. It's very windy and cold, um, but it's that kind of Monday where it kicks you in the face and makes you realize just exactly how much work you have. So I actually have a lot of things to do. So first things first, we're going to create a to-do list because. Um, I just all of a sudden feel like I have so many assignments, readings, essays, tests, um, that's a bit, it's a bit crazy. All right, so the first thing I have to do is read the whole book, uh, the whole book one of The Fairy Queen, which I said that I basically hadn't really got on with. I got a little bit of the way through before class, but what I'm gonna do is split it up because it is actually quite long, <laughs> especially because it's in these really long pages. So it's about 153 pages. So I'm gonna split this up over the next week or so since we have a test on it on Monday, among other things. So I'm gonna read 20 pages of this a day. I also have another assignment where I'm supposed to keep track of these four words um, to study them over history, to write down every time they come up and basically just to see like what their meaning is, how their meaning changes, how that relates to the context of the work. And you can bet <laughs> animal, beast, brute, and creature have already come up so many times in here. So I'm gonna have to kind of go back to the start um, and pick it up from there and then start that assignment. So that is the first thing. This week is also the perfect stressful week because I have to pick my essay topics for both of my classes. And one of them I started to devise last night. I also have to get the professor's permission to do it since like it's your own essay topic. So um, I'm gonna go in early on Wednesday and talk to him about it and hopefully get it cleared. I'm sure it will be. What I wanna do is talk about utopian literature as restoring the body of animals, both in like the sense of language and a metaphorical sense of restoring the body of an animal, but also in the way that, for example, in Utopia, there's a lot of hesitation even towards eating animals, which is really interesting, especially during that time period. Um, and then what I wanna do is kind of compare that 
to like courtly love poems, love sonnets, because they use animals so much. They basically just kind of mutilate animals' bodies and take out whatever metaphor they want from it to place onto other people, usually women, um, and just see like what's going on there, which is really interesting. And I know there's a lot, there's like some work done on animals in the Renaissance. So what I want to do is look at different works of like utopian literature. We studied Utopia by Thomas More in class, but there's also other ones like The Happy City, which is a piece of Italian Renaissance utopian literature, um, and a couple other ones, which I do need to read and see if they mention animals at all. And also how animals are used to like construct our identity, like metaphorically, but also literally when they are consumed by humans, so. And then I still have literally no idea what I want to do for my other course, so we gotta figure that out, I think literally by tonight. <laughs> Alright, so I just finished reading my 22 pages of Referral Green and there were already so many different mentions of the word creature actually was the only word. It came up like four times, so I'll have to make a note of that for a separate assignment and analyze that. Um, at the moment, I think I'm going to turn to reading Paradise Lost. This is for my class tomorrow, so I'm going to read 10 pages of it, maybe a little bit more. We're only reading book nine right now of Paradise Lost. Um, and for the Fairy Queen, we're also only reading book one. We're definitely not reading both of these big epics, <laughs> actually, but it's really hard trying to read two epics at the same time. But I thought that I should maybe just give you guys a little idea of what the Fairy Queen or Paradise Lost, what they're about. Just give you a little flavor of what we are actually reading in English classes. So the Fairy Queen is split into six books and essentially this huge epic by Edmund Spencer focuses on different knights, six different knights and their quests. So for example in book one we follow the Red Cross Knights and his virtue that he's trying to achieve um, and embody is holiness or faithfulness. There are other knights who are trying to embody other virtues like temperance. Basically this is just a wild ride, very heavily influenced by Virgil and Ovid. There are a lot of weird wacky things. We're in fairyland as well, which is this like weird space where you're never sure where you are. It's kind of like a dreamscape and things just happen. Um, for example, our red cross knight just got into a battle with error, error personified. Um, which was a snake woman <laughs> who throws up other little snakes and it's just insane stuff like that. I love talking about the Fairy Queen in class, like I really really love the lectures, however the process of actually reading this thick boy is not really enjoyable. He employs a very archaic English which I don't love having to deal with if I'm being honest, so Probably not something I'm going to choose to use in my essay that I was talking about, but I do really love studying it because just like those weird things, like this woman vomiting toads, I'm so into. And then Paradise Lost, as you can imagine, like having another foot in another epic. This is by John Milton and this is basically just the Bible or Bible fan fiction, if you will. So book nine is about, I believe, um, Eve and Adam. So Paradise Lost goes over everything from Satan's fall from heaven to humanity's fall um, and is just really, really wonderful. I much prefer reading Paradise Lost. I'm gonna sit down, read these 10 pages, and then I think we're gonna have to figure out and cement my essay for Wednesday, like my proposal.
Okay, good morning. Welcome to Tuesday. It's almost 10 o'clock. Um, I got up early this morning. I read my Paradise Lost and now I'm going to do some essay research because I might- I'm gonna try to go to the library either today or Thursday to pick up some books and stuff like that for my essay, some research. So I'm gonna see what I can find now um, through some databases like secondary sources, articles on animals in the Renaissance. Um, specifically like in utopian literature and in like court sonnet literature, I guess, poems. So that's what we're about to do, just a morning of research. The essay, one of the essays that um, I want to read, or wait, is this whole book? I don't know. It's called The Renaissance Transformation of Animal Meaning um, because I think a lot of like our, like the symbolism of animals, the metaphors they're now used for, the connotations um, we attach to, you know, animals like snakes or pigs and stuff. My uni doesn't have a copy of this book or essay, and so I'm literally gonna put in a request for it to get shipped to my university from another Ontario university. You do what you gotta do, but then I can go pick it up from my library. So that is what I did. I am super tired of doing research, so I made myself a smoothie for breakfast and yeah, I thought I could, I don't know, maybe I could talk a little bit. I find it really interesting how different every single English class is, but especially the way that um, like the differences in these two essays are and it's just cool how you have to kind of learn how to adapt with like your writing, your research, your technique or whatever to what specifically they're asking of you because both classes and professors are asking very different things for two English essays. Before the Renaissance one, that this is the one I've been researching all morning that I'm trying to write about utopian literature, animals, animals in use in metaphor in the Renaissance versus like real animals in utopian societies because there's a lot of utopian Renaissance literature. But for this one and this class, the Renaissance class, it is so focused on history. It is all focused on the Renaissance, so that makes sense. But it is super, super focused on like historical context. Um, very, very much so. And for this essay, like he really wants us to engage with secondary sources and scholarly articles and like really make sure to have that um, scholarship in your essay and like to argue against or for and to really interact with people who have done essays and written stuff about the topic that you're writing about before to include them um, and just to interact with them in your arguments. Whereas in my other course, which is just about crisis, no, literature of crisis um, and trauma and stuff like that, he's like, please absolutely hardly use any secondary sources, which is actually a challenge for me. Um, and that class, like that essay, he just wants your own thoughts completely, which is a bit daunting because the literature of crisis class is a bit more, it's just more abstract. It's so interesting to me, but it's a lot harder for me to write an essay, I think, where like it's just me and this idea where I have to pick one work that we've studied, whereas in the Renaissance course, you can pick whatever one. It doesn't have to be anything you studied at all. You can pick absolutely anything to do your essay on. And of course, like I am picking a few that we've studied, but in this crisis class, you just pick the one work that we've looked at in class and then just talk about something with that one work with no scholarship, with no secondary sources, just you and your own ideas and unraveling them. And to me, it's just a bit more like kind of floating um, and I don't have a concrete idea of what I want to talk about yet. I think I would like to do an essay on Paradise Lost, which I'm also currently reading, so that's nice, but I literally have no idea what I'm going to talk about in Paradise Lost, um, what idea I'm going to try to flesh out. Yeah, it's just really, really two different approaches, which is cool. It makes you learn a lot. It makes you work in different ways, which I find very, like a very important skill to be able to adapt. 
Anyway, I am totally done researching. My eyes are very tired from reading so many different things, but I did find a couple of books and essays. Actually, I think I found three that we're gonna try and get today. My university has so many different libraries, but these three are all at one library. So we're gonna go there either before or after class. I haven't really decided yet. And I'll get to take you guys to the library today. So it's gonna be a good day. under construction so I'm about to climb 10 million flights of stairs Buddy, what are you chomping on? What are you doing? What are you guys doing? All right, hi, I'm back from class and you know what that means. More reading. So it's now 9.30, <laughs> I am exhausted, but I actually ended up reading way more of The Fairy Queen tonight than I was anticipating because the prof posted some discussion questions for tomorrow's class since this class is more of a like seminar discussion, um, very like participation heavy. And the questions he posted that I should be like come to class with prepared and ready to talk and answer. Um, were questions that were like much further ahead in the text than I was so I had to read so so much more so I'm actually now on canto six of the fairy queen um of book one which is halfway through book one which is actually quite far so I also managed to get done my essay proposal for tomorrow so I'm gonna go in again early tomorrow and talk to him and just get that cemented and then I will also make a visit to a different library which will be fun so I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. Welcome to today. Um, I am just about to sit down and do even more reading of The Fairy Queen, which is now the bane of my existence at this point. Um, it's actually really good. It is actually really good. It just takes a while to read. And it did actually provide me some ideas for my essay on the place of animals and utopian literature versus 
Renaissance literature in general. But right after I finish a bit more reading, I really just realized that I need to get my other essay together because I don't even have like my thesis or really any idea yet of what I want it to be on. And I realized my second essay is due a lot earlier than my Renaissance essay. So <laughs> um, that's what we're gonna do after I finish reading is literally just sit down and pick like what I'm gonna be writing on. So yeah. And you guys saw last night I did get a new laptop. My laptop came in the mail last night. Um, I got the Air, the MacBook Air. Um, I've been contemplating getting a new laptop for a while. Mine broke, like it stopped working. The battery died and it was having some other problems. So I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna replace the battery in that one and I'm gonna give my old MacBook Pro to my mom. So I just decided to get a new one and bite the bullet. I didn't really want to, but it is extremely useful to have at school. Obviously I can't bring my PC with me to class. Um, and I don't really use my laptop in class. I more use it on breaks and stuff like that when I'm writing my essay, when I'm doing essay research. And this will just be really, really nice to take to um, cafes and stuff like that. So I made my background dark green, but we're gonna change that. <laughs> this is what I'm going to use to write my essay on and yeah it has like that new capitalist smell you know now i'm gonna sit down with paradise lost scour book nine because i think paradise lost is what i want to write my uh oh my god what is this class crisis uh essay on so yeah <laughs> i was just staring at this cover of paradise lost and i realized this platypus looking thing is reading a book in like the water what Sir, what are you doing? What is that? <laughs> this cover is wild. Okay, so I think actually what I've decided to do for Paradise Lost is to write it on one of the essay questions, which I hardly ever do, but one of them is about Lacan, who is a very famous, I would see like a psychoanalyst and he writes a bunch of stuff, um, but he writes that desire is the desire of the other. Um, which means that your individual desires what you want, what you want out of life. They never come from within you. They're always exterior to you. They always belong to someone else before they ever belong to you. Um, which means that you're never in control of what you desire, which is scary, according to Lacan. This essay question is just examine the logic and economy of desire in one text we have studied. Um, paying careful attention to the Collins idea that desire is always exterior to the desiring self. And obviously, in Paradise Lost Book 9, there's so much about like what Eve wants, what Satan wants, what Adam wants, um, and the whole like leading up to Eve eating the fruit from the tree. Um, there's just so many scenes of like desire, of what she wants, of what Satan wants to get out of it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick that essay question because it seems pretty applicable to me to book nine of Paradise Lost. So this one's gonna take a lot of work because I've written essays with Lacan in it before based on a lot or some stuff that Lacan has said and he's quite, he can be quite difficult at times to um, read. That's what we're gonna do. It's cemented, that's good. It's 11, 15, so I'm gonna have to leave in a little bit. But until then, I think I'm gonna get together my bibliography for my renaissance essay since that's actually due next week so today is a this is a busy week this is a busy busy week these are so funny to me <laughs> this this essay is called did milton nod directly underneath it is one called milton did not nod a response <laughs> to that author oh my gosh it's like a youtube drama video <laughs> All right, so we're heading out in a few minutes. Stop number one is to a different library today to pick up one book. And then the next stop after that is my professor's office hours to get my essay proposal and thesis approved. And then the next stop after that is my Renaissance class itself. So yes, another busy day. Um, I Currently there's pasta going on the stove. My roommate's making pasta. I think I'm gonna miss it. I'm so sad because I think the bus is coming, but Anyway, I'm gonna maybe bring a snack or buy something there. So let's go find some books.
Okay, we are off now to office hours. Every single place I go is a big trek. So I just got back from office hours. My proposal wasn't necessarily rejected, but he said to move it on to next semester's essay and combine it with one of my assignments that I'm doing about animals. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. And it'll be this big, huge essay about animals, um, which doesn't make the research I've done so far meaningless. It just means I can't use it right now. Someone sedate me. Now I need to find a new essay topic. It might be on the Fairy Queen. <laughs> might be on the Fairy Queen. Yeah. I have class in about 20 minutes, so I'm gonna eat a few clementines. It's so good, dude. Yeah. Oh my god, this, this is bomb. I've been dreaming about coming home to this pasta all day. It kept me alive. So I am back from class now and I've actually been doing more research <laughs> on a new topic for my essay, which is completely fine because I think it actually works out better this way. So I was going through the Fairy Queen like today right before class and I was like, what could I write on? And I think I actually want to discuss motherhood in book one of the Fairy Queen, the way that it's treated, the way that it's looked at, and I think the negative way that it's viewed actually because there's a lot of different mothers in book one of the Fairy Queen and a lot of them are either like explicit deadly sins or monsters or just like really nasty images of motherhood. And I think I want to look at how that relates to Queen Elizabeth as like the virgin mother, um, the virgin queen or the mother of England as well because she never married, she never had children. And I kind of want to see what is going on, like why are there so many images of both women's, well I mean I'm, I guess that's kind of obvious, but motherhood and women's reproductive um, sphere in general, looking at quite a monstrous view in the fairy queen. So I think that's really interesting too and I guess that was kind of a good thing, so I'm excited about that. But I also met a subscriber today on campus. It was just the loveliest thing ever, like it made my day. Sophie, if you are watching this, thank you so much for coming up to me and saying hi, like it just made my whole gosh darn day. And that was the first time I got to talk to one of you guys in person, so that was really, really nice. Um, so, it's almost 5.30, I think I want to have a shower and just wash today off of me. Then I'm going to read a little bit of Paradise Lost. I also want to go on a walk tonight just to take some time for myself. I'd love to paint my nails, do some gel nails, um, and then also read some of Paradise Lost for tomorrow as well as kind of start cementing my this essay proposal, the new one. Um, and see how that goes. So that's the plan. I also have a lot of reading to do and there's also a lot of like other reading I want to do in general. So kind of tight on time, but we'll see what happens. Good morning, welcome to another day. It's actually now the weekend because I got so busy over the last couple of days, but essentially um, what I have on the docket today is reading more of The Fairy Queen. Um, I read 22 pages already this morning, but I need to read a lot more because I think I've mentioned that I have a test on Monday. And for that, I need to have read the whole of The Fairy Queen. So I have, I don't know how much longer I have, but definitely have a long way. And then as you can see, I've been keeping track in green of my um, word tracking assignment that I also hope to turn into an essay. So anytime there's a mention of the words animal, beast, brute, or creature, um, I keep track of that. I see like what context they're being used in, blah, blah, blah. And then in blue, I have started tabbing some, uh, oh, not that one. In blue is the parts for my essay on um, 
motherhood in the fairy queen and what's going on and there's been a lot of really disturbing parts especially involving like people who are mothers but as well like women's anatomy um and the anatomy of like motherhood essentially and the representation of that and what is going on like it's so disturbing so yeah i'm very happy that essay topic got approved i don't know if i mentioned that um and i'm actually really really excited really looking forward to it as well as revise everything we've covered from the last test up until the second test because this is already our second test um last test was to write an essay along with some short answers and this one is more about the fairy queen i believe and writing like probably mini essays on it and stuff so i need to finish the fairy queen review it um and then go through all of the material that we've covered but um as for the essay focus um i really need to work on my paradise lost essay which i've devised a whole new topic for which i can't remember if i actually talked about so that's what we're gonna be doing today and i guess i'll take you through it I also had a very exciting delivery today because a Swedish company that does uh, wireless headphones and earbuds and stuff like that reached out to me and sent me a pair of theirs, which is so exciting. So I got the very nice, beautiful pink. Um, these are called the Air One Zen and I've already been using them and they are amazing, honestly. So I always get really self-conscious like on the bus thinking that people can hear my music when I'm playing it, but thankfully these ones, like I blasted the music almost all the way up to full volume and there was like nothing. So that's amazing. So, so I will leave a link and also a discount code down below if you're interested, but thank you so much. These are from Happy Plugs, if I didn't already say that. So thank you so much. These are so cute as well. Okay, hi guys. So it's a little bit later in the day. I changed into even warmer clothes because it is actually so cold, like I'm freezing and I can't get warm. Um, so, oh, I have just not been feeling any motivation today to study at all, to do anything, to work on my essays, to do anything productive at all. So um, to get my butt <laughs> into action, I just tried to create a very nice desk space. I put on like three ASMR rooms. There's like a Halloween lo-fi playlist a rainy library atmosphere and the great hall from harry potter and i also made myself some english breakfast tea to hopefully warm me up um because i wasn't in the mood to make more coffee shocking and i also have some strawberries here so i think what i'm gonna do this is like the coziest little setup i have like a candle burning and i'm just really loving it i'm gonna really quickly decorate my room with some postcards and stickers and other stuff that you guys sent me um that i opened in probably my last reading vlog if it's up and then i'm gonna finish reading through paradise lost this is just really like this is what's making me not motivated because i would rather work on my fairy queen essay because i feel like i have a more concrete idea what i'm doing in that but in paradise lost i kind of don't yet which we'll talk about when i'm done decorating and that's kind of why like just the process of figuring out like how you want to talk about something what you want to talk about for me i find the most the most frustrating and the hardest so anyway we're gonna take a nice little break decorate it in here a little bit with some stickers and postcards and then we're gonna get down to work
Okay, so I just finished finally going through um, and pulling out all the quotes that I think I need or will possibly use in my essay, which is what I like to do first. Um, and as well, I completed the Paradise Lost book readings for in class since we only had to read book nine. Um, but I ended up reading a lot more than book nine for the essay. I dipped from like book four all the way a little bit into book 10. So that was actually quite a lot. Um, but I have my material now. I feel a lot better because basically what I want this essay to talk about is Eve's identity. I want to do the identity question, which was an option to talk about some facet of human identity in a text. Um, and I wanted to kind of argue and look at how Eve's identity is pretty much indistinguishable from the garden itself and from the plants and flora and fauna and all of that stuff. Like, um, the way she's described, the way that she thinks of herself, she really has no conception of who she is. And so much of the reason that she eats the fruit is because she wants to know. She wants that knowledge. She wants to know who she is. Um, and she doesn't feel herself equal to Adam at all. It's actually really sad when you read this one part and you're like, oh, that is so, so sad. She eats and then she says, this will be the more to draw his love and render me more equal and perhaps a thing not undesirable, sometimes superior for inferior who is free. So that's pretty much all she knows about herself is that she's just kind of under the subjugation of Adam who's under the subjugation of God. So it's just this like double layer of subject subjection. Um, and when she first comes into paradise, like she can't even distinguish herself from um, the water, like she looks into a pond and sees her own reflection and doesn't realize that it's herself. She thinks it's another being. Um, and throughout the whole thing, she is just so tied to the plants and the garden, the physical garden itself. Um, and I'm going to argue that like Satan uses that to convince her to eat the tree because the language that he uses to talk about her, he then transfers onto the tree, which she identifies with and begins to identify as part of herself. And how is it, you know, a sin to partake in yourself, I guess. So yeah, I'm done that reading, thankfully. And now I want to take a break. I'm tired. I think what I'm going to do is switch it up and start studying for my test on Monday since I only have today and tomorrow to study for it. I'm not too worried about that really because the first test I think went really well. So I know what to expect too, but that's what we're going to do. Can we all start using the word ogglesome again? <laughs> Can we please? Okay, well, me and the crows, uh, the crows and I, thank you very much for watching. It's now been one full week in the uni life, English life, um, and I am about to head out to class to write the test that I spent all weekend studying for. So yeah, I hope you found this entertaining or informative or something like that. Um, if you'd like to see more of these, I don't know, English major life studying academic stuff videos please let me know because this honestly gave me a lot of motivation to do my work i'm about to head out into the rainstorm to go write the test on the fairy queen and then when i come back get started on all the rest so i might start another vlog right after maybe not but regardless if you have any questions please leave them down below and thank you so much for watching i hope you're doing super duper duper well and i will see you very soon so ciao